attending this uh, briefing on the status of uh, investigation by the French court on this COVID case. Um, I'm on behalf of the leaders of opposition's uh, parliament leaders of opposition's uh, office, Dr. Suryan Ibrahim, uh, to welcome all of you to attend this uh, briefing. Uh, together with us um, today, uh, flying all the way from Paris, uh, Apolline Kanye. Uh, she's the associate of uh, William Boudon, who is the main lawyer representing Swaram on the case of Scopin. Um, she's um, coming specially with the um, intentions of giving us an up-to-date uh, situations and development on the investigations by the French court on this Gopin case. And um, on behalf of uh, Dr. Siano Ibrahim, he's uh, not here with us, um, but I would like to thank um, the efforts of our colleagues uh, traveling this far to come in. And we also regret that uh, we were unable to come into Malaysia to do this briefing safely and uh, in a conducive environment. This is much to our regret. And um, today we have some MPs coming from various parties, um, come specially for this briefing. Uh, this is the best we can, we can do. Uh, at the same time, we are, we are having uh, uh, streamings straight to KL, where reporters and Malaysian people can follow these uh, briefings, sessions uh, through internet. Once again, welcome Apolines to Singapore. Unfortunately, I can't say welcome to Malaysia, although <laughs> most of us are Malaysian Parliament. Uh, on behalf of uh, the, the, our opposition leaders, we apologize that we are not yet uh, able to bring you to Malaysia, but hopefully uh, it can we can be fulfilled one day. So now I hand over to Cynthia so that we can get on with the briefing. Thank you very much. Once again, welcome uh, to everybody. Thank you for you making an effort to come. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Cynthia Gabriel from Swaram. Um, I'm very um, disappointed that we're gathered here in Singapore today. This briefing was supposed to be in Malaysia, as uh, YB Tian Chua said. And uh, just a little addition to that, uh, because uh, the second time around, uh, the first time William Bordon came into Malaysia, I think we all know that he was um, um, forcefully deported from the country. A very, very shameful act, actually. And uh, the invitation by uh, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim for a briefing to Parliament actually comes at a very opportune time because uh, there have been uh, endless uh, lies, misconception, misunderstanding of the case and of the whistleblowers Wara in trying to bring up this case. So the timing of this briefing is actually very important because um, among the esteemed guests that are here, are members of parliament who have been quite consistent uh, in raising questions on the issue of scorpion and on the issue of defense spending. And this is one of the major areas that have bred corruption in the ruling administration. So as much as we are very disappointed uh, that we have to come to Singapore to hear the briefing and the updates of the Scorpion case, we must recognize why we're actually forced to come here. There seems to be um, a great deal of effort by the Malaysian government to stop information from flowing to the Malaysian public and accurate facts of the case to actually reach the Malaysian public. And I must also mention the presence of the Malaysian High Commission uh, who are here today. So we welcome you to sit in. Um, but the question in my mind is uh, uh, why uh, does the Malaysian government send a member of the High Commission when the briefing should actually be 
for all Malaysians so that everyone can hear about it. But because of technology, <coughs> live streaming, uh, tweeting, Facebook and everything, we are quite sure that uh, the briefing will be well publicised and uh, our briefing session today will go on very successfully. So let me begin also by introducing uh, Apolina Kanya. She is one of the lawyers of Swaram, an associate of William Bourdon. She's been working in the firm of William Bourdon for the last three years. And um, more importantly, and very importantly actually, she has been involved in another very similar case, which is more well known as the Karachi case, which um, actually highlights um, the case of Pakistan procuring armory and weapons from the same shipbuilding company that um, the Scorpion submarines were purchased from. Of course, the facts of the case differ. There were engineers from France who were, who were blasted and killed in the case of, the, of Karachi. Of course, in Malaysia, we have a Mongolian um, citizen who was uh, blasted and killed as well. So there is a trend um, that we will hear from uh, Apolina. Uh, and I, without wasting um, precious time, I'm going to hand over the session to her uh, to talk, first of all, about the French judicial system. I think it's very important for all of us to understand the French system is very different from the Malaysian uh, Commonwealth system. So uh, that would be the first part of a briefing. The second part will be about the description of Swaram as a civil plaintiff and to actually uh, correct many of the misconceptions about our role in the ongoing inquiry. And finally, what the media is waiting for, uh, the next steps, the developments in the case, uh, in the inquiry. So there will be three parts to a presentation and I will now uh, hand over the microphone to her. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. Uh, so if you don't mind, I think I'm gonna maybe mix a little part one and part two, which is the French legal system, but applying it to the Swarin case, if that's okay. So it's more maybe practical for everyone. Uh, so, as you probably know, uh, Swaram, through his its French lawyers, filed uh, what we could call in France a simple complaint. At least, at least that's the the term we used uh, in France. So, so that was in December two thousand and nine. Uh, so it was a first simple complaint that was filed uh, to the prosecutor's office in Paris. Uh, this complaint uh, was at the origin of investigation that the prosecutor decided to launch at this step. Only the prosecutor can actually decide to either launch investigations or decide to close the case, or he can even not answer. But in this case, uh, the prosecutor decided to launch investigations, and that was at the end of December 2009 as well. So there were preliminary investigation for some time, and after some time, Swaram decided that uh, they wanted to be a part of the case, so they filed what we call a criminal complaint with civil part. This means that you actually, you don't seize the prosecutor anymore, you can't go above, and you seize an investigating judge. So this is when uh, two judges at the Paris court were Two investigating judges were appointed to to investigate on the on this case. So I understood that there was some misinterpretation of the what actually happened, and that there was some misinformation about the fact that Swan is indeed a civil part. So I'm going to try to take back the steps one by one so that you understand uh, how it happened. Okay, so first there's this first complaint. That's like that by Swaham. Uh, the investigation started, and Swaham decides to go further with this criminal complaint with civil court. Uh, this is when the civil court constitution of Swaham was rejected because uh, the prosecutor's office was opposed to it because it 
thought that it didn't suffer any direct prejudice. Or you say, look, then, right? Look, yeah. look, 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 right. Uh, so this, Swaham was rejected, but just a couple of days afterwards, it's actually the prosecutor himself who decided to seize judges because of the complexity of the case. At some point, when it's really complex and you have investigations that have to be made everywhere around the world, or at least in several countries, many companies probably involved, etc., usually prosecutors decide to seize judges. So this is when the instruction, so the procedure with investigating judges, sorry, really started. And in this second part, so the part initiated by the prosecutor's office, Swaham filed again a civil complaint. And then the prosecutor didn't oppose itself, so they were declared admissible and have been convoked before the investigating judge last April. So that there is no misunderstanding, the association is indeed a civil part in the Swaham case. Uh, this was obviously helped by the fact that in 2000, and 10, William Bourdon uh, obtained a really uh, good decision before the Supreme Court in Paris, uh, seeing that associations like Swaham, and in, in that case that was Transparency International Friends, uh, even though they were not direct, completely direct victims, like a victim of, sorry for the comparison, but violences or rape, uh, they could actually file a civil complaint and launch the investigation. So this case law changed in France in 2010 uh, at the initiative of Transparency International defended by William Bourdon in the ill-gotten case, ill-gotten assets case, sorry, it's a case that uh, concerns different uh, African authorities, heads, heads of states uh, that we're working on at the firm. So regarding, I think, the Procedure and the fact that Swaham is indeed a civil board, I think I pretty much covered it, unless some members of the yeah, have questions. Uh, I'll just like to question. Uh, you mentioned about the the complaint, and then uh, the prosecutor will uh, take it up, and he can either uh, launch an investigation or he can just ignore it. Yeah. Uh, was there any reason uh, why the prosecutor decided to uh, investigate this case? I mean, were there uh, preliminary issues which uh, showed that there was a, a, a case in the first place or uh, you know if, if, if you could well explain. I think that the, the complaint filed by Swaham mm -hmm. was bringing actually pretty uh, many elements and uh, on, on the fact that there actually was issues on this submarines and on this contract so I think the, the complaint was very detailed and they could it would be it could have been difficult for them to actually ignore it Plus, uh, the fact that this um, Golden uh, translator uh, was also murdered made, made it, I guess, even more serious. And it was obviously uh, complicated once you have investigations in one country to ignore it. Mm. Uh, and also, France is really launching and has been for some time anti-corruption uh, politics. So, so they take this seriously. It's the same thing in the Karashi case as as Cynthia mentioned. I see. So the fact that uh, the prosecutor decided to actually launch an investigation uh, shows to a certain extent, if in our system you would say that there was a prima facie, cons considered to be a prima facie case, that there is sufficient uh, proof of or yes. evidence of wrongdoing, therefore the prosecutor took it decided up. Decided to go further, exactly. Because they can, for instance, close the case if there's no person, no author. I, I think of the cases in France that the reasons why sometimes the cases are directly closed by the prosecutor it could be author not an identified mm -hmm. or uh, not enough proof, not enough proof. Uh -huh. or also there's sometimes there are competence issues but usually it's because not enough proof or author not identified. I see. Okay. So here it shows the will uh -huh. to the, the proof that there were elements. There were elements. There were sufficient elements. There were sufficient to launch investigations. Investigation. Exactly. Okay. We're lucky to have two really motivated judges uh, in this case who are really willing to investigate and the police uh, is also really willing to investigate on this case. So I think it's really good news for Malaysia and for Swarm. 
so regarding what's to come, uh, of course there are there are several aspects to 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 talk about. So first, uh, we believe, and we're on the shore, uh, that the judges will, will indeed investigate on the death on the Mongolian translator. So not like investigate because two people have, have already been sentenced to death uh, for this, but at least obtain communication of the case in Malaysia uh, to, to actually put it in their files. Uh, then there are different acts that should be happening. We cannot say that they would happen soon. We don't know how long it's going to take because there are evidence are needed, but we obviously believe that at some point uh, an international regulatory commission would probably be issued to Malaysia. Uh, the issue being, of course, that we have zero certainty on the cooperation. So this will be something that we we'll have to wait and see. What, what, can you repeat? Yeah. Uh, regulatory what? Commission. Regulatory Commission. Commission Regulatory International. I don't know if you have it. Regulatory. Regulatory Commission. International Regulatory Commission. Oh, no. Rogatory? Or? Rogatory. Ro rogatory yeah, is questioning, it's right? Like, yeah, you ask the other state to actually, you ask them to uh, give you certain files and to help you in your investigation oh, okay. to another country. Okay. What do you call this? Uh, Sorry, the English the, the cooperation that we receive from other Yeah, it's like asking for cooperation. It's a state to state request. Exactly. So, obviously, well, there are other countries uh, that will probably receive such cooperation demands, but obviously, uh, it would be very interesting. Uh, that one is sent to Malaysia, and we can only hope that they will completely cooperate on this. Uh, then regarding, uh, I don't know if Swan already mentioned it, but uh, they actually asked for a few witnesses. They gave a list of witnesses uh, that they would like the judge to hear. Uh, some of them, obviously, are the two main witnesses, so I'm sorry I'm going to try to say it right. <laughs> So there's, of course, uh, Abdul Razak Baginda and uh, Najib Razak, the Prime Minister. Uh, it's complicated, they have this name, almost. Uh, so these are two, of course, very important witnesses for now that we hope the judges will manage to interrogate. Uh, of course, the complexity is that when you're on a witness statute, uh, well, the judges can ask questions, but we have like zero certainty that they will actually show up. Uh, and we are not sure whether uh, it's the type of situation you actually force them to come. So, of course, when they will be subpoenaed, uh, that will be very interesting to see their reaction. Uh, so, regarding, sorry. So those two also, yeah, I wanted to talk about the fact that uh, if the person, the Prime Minister or Abdul Razak are convoked by the judge and they don't show up, uh, you have to bear in mind that there is still a possibility for the judges to issue, uh, if they have sufficient evidence, an arrest warrant. Uh, this is something that we've seen recently at the firm uh, in the ill-gotten assets case where uh, Mr. Obiong uh, didn't show up before the judges in Paris, and there is an arrest warrant, they issued an arrest warrant, who has been spread by Interpol. So this could definitely happen again uh, in the Swaran case, as long, of course, as they, the judges have enough evidence to uh, issue that kind of warrant, so enough evidence to at least indict them. But this is something that Cannot that it has to be said, and uh, there is no complete immunity for those people, and they can respond before the justice for what they could have done, or at least be convoked and explain themselves before the judges. The Swara provided uh, how many names? Uh, about ten names for. I think it's seven. Yeah, yeah. about seven names for suggestions to. Uh, to be interrogated by the judge for um, 
<coughs> as witness. So, um, you mentioned just now that he has been shortlisted. Means that. No, it's for us. For us, they are, of course, the most important people. Right. So. To be subpoenaed and. Right. They are the ones who can bring much so the more information. So, two names have been prioritized. Well, obviously, yes, yeah, for Swaham, two names are prioritized, uh, and uh, now we can just hope that they really are for everyone and that they're subpoenaed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, do they have to be questioned in France, or can. Not necessarily, but against the same issue is. If we ask no, Malaysia to the, interrogate them, we don't we don't have certainty that everything will be actually that the preparation will be perfect. That's always the reason. Yeah. Uh, the the seven names provided by Swaram, obviously, this seven are basically from uh, all uh, in the Malaysian uh, context, isn't it? All Malaysians. But uh, the investigation with respect to the. Uh, uh, wrongdoing or corruption or practice of uh, corrupt practices. Uh, obviously, it, it doesn't involve only Malaysians. Uh, what about the uh, the French parties? I mean, even if you do not get uh, full cooperation from the Malaysian uh, personalities that have been listed, uh, the, f the, the 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 French counterparts uh, would obviously uh, be also called up, and uh, any investigation that can prove uh, wrongdoing on their part will obviously also be of interest uh, to us. And so it's not, not completely, you know, we, we no, don't no, have no. to zero in on to uh, oh, no, uh, these two individuals uh, <laughs> only. Uh, I'm sure that the, the purpose of the of the trial is not so much to uh, go for these two people, but uh, more so to prove uh, or to investigate the uh, accusation of wrongdoing. And if uh, French counterparts are also uh, proven to be guilty, then uh, obviously by uh, you know by, by association, association uh, so would be the Malaysian and the Malaysian government. So you can achieve uh, a proof of guilt uh, indirectly in that manner. It, 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 would that be would, would that be correct for me to say it in that manner? Yeah, of course you yeah. could. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I just I left it the French part a bit behind because it's just way easier to actually convict people in France and the procedure will be less complicated. So I yeah. focused on the yeah, Malaysian okay. people. All right. Yeah, because. Uh, otherwise, uh, we may get the impression that it's like uh, you know we're, we're just zeroing in on this on this two and in particular <laughs> no, 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 number no. one, uh, which of obviously not. No, no, is it, not it is not is not between yes. French, okay. French companies. And so so far, how many of these uh, um, the French sites of the has been summoned by the investigators? And well, this is something that I, uh, is under investigation, so there's no yeah. comment that I can make on the actual investigation. I can't really tell you what's to expect and what we hope and what we think will happen, but for what's actually going on, whether the judges are investigating everything, it's covered by the secret investi of investigation, so I cannot yeah. come in this. Mm. But so far, the, the investigation is ongoing on the DCN side. Okay. It's ongoing on all sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you say how it? many witnesses have perhaps been caught on the French <coughs> side? I mean, we have our list of witnesses from Swara, but is the list of witnesses open as well from the French side? Well, I, we have at least seven. I mean, all the, seven all the people in, the, in this company who had maybe a, an important uh, role. role or important uh, yeah, knowledge of the case. So that could be from the director at this time uh, to some commercial director or whatever. So it can, there could be a lot of people. In the seven, is, uh, does it include also uh, uh, Mr. Sharibu, the uh, murdered Mongolian uh, translator, the father of the mur murdered Mongolian translator? Out of the seven names, yes, yes. does it include as well Mr. Sharibu? Give us the seven names and who they are. Yeah, it's uh, Baginda, yeah. the aide of the Prime Minister, yeah. the Prime Minister himself. Mm. Um, the present Defence Minister, Sahir Hamidi, uh, Abu Raza, uh, Al Tantuya's father, Mr. Sharibu, uh, P.I. Bala. P. I. Bala. P. I. Bala. Uh, P. I. Bala had been crossed out because he was already examined in the, in the stage of the public investigation, the earlier stage. I see. And then we and have uh, Lozin Wong Kamaruddin. He is the 
uh, Sorry, director of uh, uh, Bausted and also uh, he's linked with Perry Maker. So he was uh, uh, proffered as a witness more to look at it from a, a business investment uh, can you repeat, repeat the name? Lodin Pong. L-O-D-I-N. 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 Has somebody been submitted? You can't comment on that. I can't comment that. I'm sorry. <laughs> the same answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think just to clarify, because uh, our, our, our lawyers in France are subject to uh, certain laws in France uh, that makes it very difficult for them to, to share certain information as long as the investigations are ongoing. Uh, Swaram not being... Uh, the direct party in France uh, is able to say a little bit more. Uh, and so we have actually in several public uh, meetings already announced that a subpoena has been served. We just don't, are not able to say who it is, okay. but it has been served. And what we also know is that uh, a second subpoena is in the process of being served. Uh, how long can it go on, or is there a time frame I, where I'm after a certain time, if nothing I know is, I, I, I read uh, what the, yeah. another lawyer came to say last time uh, when he was in Bangkok, and he said between one to twenty years. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's impossible to give an actual time frame. The more the more they dig, maybe the more they find complex things to that have to be investigated very deeply. So the more complex it gets, the longer it gets, and I think. Even though it's frustrating to see that it takes time, it's also maybe a good thing since with a good investigation, maybe there's more chances that the result and the outcome is what we believe it should be based on the complaint that we filed. So it can be frustrated for sure. It's not, 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 not really frustrating. Yeah. And also it takes time because it's an international matter, so you have against those rogatory permissions that we were talking about just before. Uh, it takes time for the other countries to co do the acts that the judges are asking, uh, the police is working, the judges are working, other countries should be working soon also in this case, so it takes time, but again we have very, very competent services working on this. So. Maybe just to add on this, um, maybe you can share a little bit since uh, this opportunity when uh, we were introduced that you were on the Pakistanis case and uh, what was the experience of the Pakistanis case and how how it was, uh, what's it called, how it proceed and uh, how what and how it has been proceed and what. Well, for instance, yeah, this one started more than 10 years ago yeah. in my and it's not finished yet. Yeah. Oh, to give a description of the, the, how the, the, the Karachi case. Uh, well, it, this is something under also in the Karachi case is still ongoing. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. and it's not even subject. Just I'm sorry, I can't really get that. But just know that it's been uh, the investigations have been well for the terrorism part for more than ten years. I think for the financial part, it's just I guess it started in 2009 as well, and we're not done yet. So it can take time, but that's the issue with uh, yeah. that kind of, a, yeah, of financial uh, crimes. It's complicated because the principle is that the people who are involved do everything to hide everything. So you have offshore company that you have, and you have to trace the money. And it, of course, it takes time because you're going to Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Malta. It's complicated with fake names, and it's long. But we shouldn't be discouraged by no, this. No, no, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. But we don't want and to be just uh, after 20 years become academic. Uh, academic uh, no, of course. No, no, but I think 20 years was a bit exaggerated. But again, I don't want to say that in two years it will be finished. I have no idea. Plus, uh, you also have to know, well, it's more technical, but in, once uh, the investigation, so what we call the instruction in France, uh, once the judge thinks that for him it's finished and he 
investigated everything. There's also uh, certain delays to actually, uh, there could be more than a year for people to actually be before judges in court. Because of procedural. To be prosecuted. Yeah, to be actually for the trial, the actual trial. There's a whole procedure, and you can be sure that usually in those kind of cases, uh, they're the ones that are the more delayed uh, by the people who are uh, supposed to appear before a court because they usually have good lawyers who always find ways. And we've seen it again recently at the firm to try and delay and delay and gain time. I'm not sure it's going to be the same thing, but sometimes. In, it works in, like that. In our case, uh, the Malaysians' legal, legal team whatever, is completely absent from, from the uh, representation with the investigation. Like, like, for example, in this case, the Malaysian side uh, is totally, the uh, Malaysian uh, government side yeah. is totally absent. They don't have legal representation, they have not expressed their willingness to cooperate. What would be the, the situation like? I mean, is, is it means that uh, the judge is, uh, will be frustrated or could not be proceeding for this or or the judge can go ahead to investigate well, despite there's no representation? Well, the fact that there's no representation doesn't change anything because uh, in the French procedure you actually need to have a lawyer uh, and have legal representation once you're actually really suspected officially and convoked by the judge. So the fact that there's no official legal representation in the procedure is normal because they're not a part, an actual party in the procedure yet. And this it's when you are a party that you choose to get a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't this doesn't mean either that the the French judges do not have an interest in digging over there, of course, but I believe also that once you uh, get interested in people who are actually in office and working as our member of the states, etc., you need to have a very solid case. So I think this might be also the reason why it takes a bit more time, but they need to build something perfect if they actually go forward. But the, it's really normal, and there's no worry to have because they have no lawyer. This is just normal procedure. And I don't think that, I doubt, since they are actually mentioned in our complaints, that they are just going to cooperate like this once when they are actually aimed at in the complaints by, by Swa. Uh, possible that the parties who are, uh, you know, the French party that's, that's involved uh, and being in investigated, could that uh, investigation be uh, completed uh, earlier uh, as compared to the investigation towards people who are uh, in Malaysia? Or do you, uh, is it all going to be together? I think it's going to be complicated to actually separate the two. Mm. It's so late. Sometimes it happens when there's no not such a tough link and I think it's impossible to separate one from another so it will be like a package if yeah. something happens. Yeah. Who judges were appointed to carry out the investigation? Yeah. The system in France appointed them or it is at their own uh, you know, willingness to sit with You don't always have to judge in French, usually you have to when the case is a bit more complicated for instance, cash case you have two judges. Uh, so in case you have two judges, but if you, for other more simple uh, crimes or all, you only have one. So it's usually when it's more complicated, when it gets financial, you can move it to an international. But if there are judges from, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't know how to translate it. Uh, but you have to also note that because of the complexity of the case, not that it's unsolvable, but just because there are so many people, companies, and countries involved, uh, it's a special uh, it's a special judges that were appointed. They're part of what we call, I don't know how to translate it, it's Juridiction uh, Internationale Regionale Spécialisée. Well, they're kind of experts in those cases. Let's say this. <laughs> yeah, experts. Yeah. Special judges, they're parts of a special group.
Let's say it like that. Can I just follow up with a, with a clarification? But I think just for the benefit of some of the Malaysians, uh, both FPs and press who are present, uh, there is that basic difference between the French system and our Malaysian system. The Malaysian system is pretty similar to the British system, which we inherited from, uh, from the British, where the investigative role in the criminal justice system is kept more or less exclusively to the police. And the police, you know, investigate any alleged crime. When they complete the investigation, then that is sent to the, the prosecutorial agency, which is the Attorney General's Chambers, who examines the evidence and decides whether there is the, enough evidence for a charge to be brought, and they make that decision to charge the court. So the role of the judiciary in our system uh, is basically then to conduct the trial, yeah? the actual trial, and then decide whether the person is to be is guilty or not of the offence. The French system has one major difference, which is uh, certain sections of the judiciary are given the power to investigate as well. Things it's what we call the inquisitorial system, as opposed to the British common law system, which is more adversarial, which is what we have in Malaysia. So I think that's the interesting part. Where in this case, if I'm not wrong, uh, and I'm sorry, you can correct me. Initially, the investigation was done by the police. There was a police. It was, it was the prosecutor's office. I'm sorry, the prosecutor's who office. Asked the police to do it, but asked the prosecutor. Right. So the prosecutor asked the police to do it, and they guide the police in the investigation. But now it has been lifted to the what do we call the um, investigating judge. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the Correct, yeah, so the... But it's different because they have a different statute than the prosecutor. Uh, there are, uh, so the prosecutor is sort of appointed by the government. The investigating judges are completely independent, independent. judges. Right. Uh, and there has been a debate at the European Court of Justice, uh, Human Rights, sorry, uh, about is the, prosecutor, the French prosecutor an actual judicial authority because it lacks independence. Right. But the... The instruction judges, investigating judges, are independent judges, and they have to actually investigate uh, what we call a charge and a décharge. It means uh, it cannot just think that the prosecutor is usually uh, very severe and goes just for the sentence. That's what we believe as defense lawyers most of the times. Uh, but the judge really has to uh, investigate all points of views. Yes. It cannot just it has to be investigating investigating the points that could discharge uh, a part or, you know. Sure. So the, the, the uh, investigating judges, as you said, investigate all aspects of the, of the allegation yes. to see whether, and, you know, giving the defense, those accused even a fair chance exactly. of presenting their, exactly. their response and so on. You know, it's not, it doesn't go just with a prosecutorial mind. Exactly. Like that. I think that's in short the basic difference with the system. Mm -hmm. And as you said earlier, at the conclusion of the the inquiry by the judges, then they make that decision whether there's somebody to be charged exactly. of a corruption offence. If so, who will it be? And, and so on and so forth. Exactly. So we're still at the stage of the, the investigation. The question I wanted to just get a clarification is because I'm sorry I came in a bit we came in a bit late because we couldn't get the earlier flight. But um, there was uh, we know from the murder trial of, of Atantuya, the Mongolian lady who was associated with us with Brazil Premier, we know from that trial uh, there were allegations uh, that she was claiming a sum of a certain sum of money, five hundred thousand US dollars to be exact, from Razak Baginda, and apparently that some there has some connection to this commercial transaction. Uh, so would those issues be also uh, possibly be investigated uh, in this in this uh, ongoing investigation process. Well, I I don't think you can actually take the I guess for me uh, that you cannot investigate this case without this is not maybe not the key part but it's a very important part of the case. So I really don't believe the judges are going to let this aspect behind. So is why, what I said earlier is that we believe that they're going to ask uh, the jurisdiction to send them. Uh, the whole file to, to to put it in their procedure in France, have it translated and checked through it. Sorry, can I just be clear about that? Uh, what are you saying that the inquiry, the investigating judges in they France will obviously use 
are asking for the they record will. of the trial. Right. Or they we, don't, we don't see how it could go any other way. Right. So they'll be asking for because the record of the murder trial here? Yeah. And investigate, and maybe investigate again. I mean, it, obviously it's complicated once uh, well, two people have been sentenced and another one has been acquitted. Uh, but uh, they will obviously look into this. So just uh, further clarification on the appointment of the investigating judges. Who chooses these judges? Is it the prosecutor himself who then uh, picks well, we, It's like uh, the doyen, the, the dean of the judges. The dean something. of the judges. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, it's like the highest head. ranking judge. Yeah, it's okay. every, chief justice. every court has a sort of you know the judges mm -hmm. investiga okay. of the investigating judges. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he decides whether only one or two, depending on the. Uh, on exactly. The also, sometimes I guess sometimes the judges say that they would like this case or <laughs> or not, but yeah, it's the the chief of the judges mm -hmm. decides. Can I go to another area? Sure. Yeah. Um, that some of these, um, some of the subject matter of this investigation was written about by a journalist called John Bertelsen, uh, and documents were put up in a website called uh, the Asia Sentinel website, uh, which claims to have about 133 documents uh, which are related to the investigation. What I want to ask is this, are these documents in the website part of that investigation. That's all I want, I want to know. This, know is, as a fact. this is typically the kind of question that I, I cannot or will not answer because uh, the firm never, uh, we don't know how these documents actually went online. No, no, uh, I'm asking, and we yeah. cannot confirm anything about uh, these documents being investigation because of that secret again. So I will not be able to comment anything about the documents on this website. Yeah, I, I'm not really I'm not asking about whether, uh, how they got there, that's not my No, no, but so I cannot confirm that they are in the procedure or not. This is really something oh, okay. we want to document. Okay. okay. Uh, just uh, one point of concern. Uh, the latest response from the Malaysian government is that this uh, Scorpion deal was a government-to-government -government affair. Yeah? We have no uh, intermediary, no marketing agent, no, 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 well, no. It's the way to actually avoid. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> we are concerned. Right. We are concerned that if it is, if it is a government to government uh, kind of arrangement, then uh, what was actually uh, occurring uh, may be, uh, you know, covered up uh, on the insistence of uh, both governments involved. Well, what, what guarantee do we have that the investigating judges and the judicial uh, system in uh, France will be able to free itself of uh, government uh, censure uh, in this case? If it is truly you know, uh, something that happened uh, with the blessings of the French government at that time. Well, uh, first of all, I'm not as confident as the Malaysian government that they will actually Prove that it was just government to government. Uh, I'm pretty confident that there was there will be uh, written proof that there were actually commissions and that it was also with private companies. And this is why also the judges are working so hard. Uh, they are going out the work trying to find those written documents that uh, prove that what the Malaysian government is actually saying right now is just a way to try and es escape. Uh, but I don't think that too much credit should be given to these affirmations for now. Uh, with respect to the second part of the question, what guarantee do we have that the French judicial system will not bow down to government pressure, the French government pressure, if the government was involved? Well, you have to kind of trust the government with this. <laughs> uh, I believe we are uh, lucky let's say in France, to have a pretty independent judicial system. Uh, they have shown that they have, that they're not really afraid of digging where people in other states wouldn't like them to be digging. Uh, the Karashi case is one of, is an example, the Swaham case as well. Uh, so is the ill-gotten assets, because honestly, I don't think that issuing an arrest warrant against a minister of Equatorial Guinea 
-hmm. is that easy for all judicial systems. So, and honestly, I, the second the, the, the complaint was filed, the investigations were launched. So this is something that France is actually really interested and serious about. I think that it's, it's going to be more of a diplomatic <laughs> incident, I guess, uh, forbidding French judges to come and investigate here. Not, co not cooperating is one thing. Uh, not answering to uh, a request is one thing. But I mean, we're not there yet. But I can't, I can do, yeah, I think it's difficult to imagine this. And who knows what will happen for the government Malaysia, the, the government of Malaysia when the judges come. It could change. Yeah. So, so you're confirming that if they, they come. will be coming? Ah, no, I have, no, 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 I'm not confirming that. I mean, they can ask for cooperation. Some judges can come. They, it's really, up, it's up to them, it's really. It's quite sometimes different. they just like it, but they like to investigate themselves. Sometimes they uh, just send police officers to. Mm -hmm. It really depends so there's on a, the case. There is a possibility of, of course, course, they can. It's it's, it's quite diff different. Uh, different preventing you from coming to Malaysia, and preventing exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very different. Even different. though I don't like it. Either. <laughs> don't be too sure. <laughs> <laughs> we are very bad experience in our country, even the current uh, chief just, just uh, has also been appealing the prime minister of the country not to interfere, you know, so there is the extent of independence in Malaysia. So is there a same case where the judge in, in France have uh, ever uh, tell of uh, the president, for example, not the have what, sorry? Set up. Tell off. Can you see, uh, the chief... Is there another case in France? No, no, in Malaysia, the, the, to show that the, uh, the, the judiciary is independent, the chief justice pulled off the prime minister not to, you know, to disturb... Uh, uh, to not to intervene? To, not to interfere. To interfere. Yeah. So, uh, the system in uh, in France has there been any occasion when the uh, the, the, the charges or whatever uh, you know, say anything against the uh, when they have as someone of the government to not interfere with the case? What we all obviously had. I mean, there's always when it comes to state case, you always have a risk of the political power to actually try and influence uh, some decision of the judicial power. But uh, luckily, as you probably know, uh, in France, the, we just we changed the government changed like six months ago, uh, and we have a new president who said he would never intervene uh, in any case. And I believe uh, lawyers, judges, and everyone is actually feeling a little more independent, more independent and free uh, since those six months. So of course, it's always it can always happen, of course, but then it's at some levels. Not all, I, I don't believe that all cases in France are actually uh, directed by the political power or were even before that president came into place. Uh, but of course, there's always a risk that some high powered people try to interfere. How much but interest is this case? Sorry? How much interest is this case uh, created in, in How France? How much interest is this case yeah. in? In France. In France, well. Right now, France is kind of busy with Karachi, I guess, <laughs> because this is what they... No priority. Well, because it, uh, well, French because a lot of, yeah, French political, French politicians were indicted, and so I guess they're on it right now, but I'm pretty sure some people will respond soon afterwards. No, no, but they do speak about it. I mean, there are articles in uh, important newspapers. Uh, I, I brought one today. It's in Le Monde, which is one of the, if not the biggest uh, newspaper who's really who's got a very good reputation for being very independent and very serious, crossing their references, etc. So no, you have, you have art. People talk about it, of course. It's, a, it's an important corruption, international corruption case in France.
perhaps one of the ways we can actually um, expand the interest in France. This is something that we've been trying to figure out how to actually get the French newspapers more interested. I think one element is for French NGOs to 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 back Swaram in the case. The other is really uh, to draw the links with the Karachi case because there are some uh, there are some officials in DCNS who overlap with the Karachi case and the Malaysia case, and one of them is the financial director of DCNS. So it, they need some some building uh, in, in terms of interest in France, but but we do need a counterpart on the French side to actually get things going. So with that, uh, if the, the the company DCNS is it a, a, a French company or is it a joint venture with another company outside France? No, DCNS French. Yeah. I was just sorry. With just one final clarification, just. I think just for the benefit of uh, the MPs as a whole, could you clarify uh, what the allocation is that is being investigated in this investigation? You know, in other words, what is the... Uh, yeah, I think I can't can put it... The, the, what is, the facts themselves? Yeah, the facts. What, what is the issue that's being investigated? Well, the, the investigation concerns the sale of three uh, submarines, uh, and there was there were contracts because, of course, when you sell submarines, there's not one contract, there are several uh, between, well, the DC and the French company, uh, a company called Perimap, who, which uh, Swaham realized that is actually owned uh, by uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, to Raza Baginda. Raza Baginda. Raza Baginda. Sorry. <laughs> complicated, uh, and uh, Swaham realized that there were commissions, uh, at least some money was wired on this, for instance, this particular company, uh, and that could look like commission and corruption of uh, uh, members, no, corruption of uh, officials, yeah, exactly, so it's, the, the, the contract is like, uh, in my mind, it's one point one billion billions and there are for instance this for commission that is uh, that was uh, denounced by Swaham is of uh, allegedly 114 million yeah euro so they are investigating on the commissions and the possibly corruption the possible corruption which is crazy so is that the only contract 114, 114, 115 million, or is there? 114, yeah. Call it 115 million euros, but is there any other? Well, I, uh, again, there are, of course, other things in the investigation files, uh, but what I can uh, say is, was just in Le Monde, for instance, they stated uh, not long ago, let me just find your again, so I have the numbers correct, uh, two other commissions, one of 30 million, right? Oh, well, the whole pack was 150, uh, because there was also one of 30 million and another one. Uh, let me check that one. Okay. So there are other contracts. But it's complicated to go, there would be, for now, what Swan has found out is three contracts. Uh, so I, I just want to make it as clear as I can, so I'm going to try to find the right document that is stating everything. Uh, so there's this first contract uh, with those uh, 100, 115 uh, million, possible million dollar commission, uh, million euros commission, sorry. And then, um, yes, yeah, so there's another one of uh, 2.5 million euros. Uh, this was apparently, uh, apparently the origin was that uh, while making, constructing one of the submarines, uh, some, well, that is said that uh, there was a bump in the submarine that needed fixing, or that I'm not really a professional in submarines, and uh, this so-called bump uh, were needed to be, need, needed like 2.5 million to be repaired, 
uh, and so this is and so in order to uh, for the government to actually pay those two million, they made this. Uh, how do you say? Um, this was a, a variation okay. order. Uh, and so those two point five million are still being investigated. Sorry, when it comes to numbers, I'm. Yeah, and the thirty million uh, is a second commission. It's four percent of the original contract of one point one billion for the three submarines. Uh, and Swaham actually, uh, I, don't, I don't think I have the document here, but Swaham actually gave it to the judge this letter that was, uh, you know, we, we wrote to the prosecutor's office at the end of 2010 uh, stating that there was the second commission of 30 million and uh, we joined uh, a letter to prove that, but I don't have it with me, that it was a second commission of, three, of 30 million euros, sorry. So that would make, yeah, almost 150 million. So these three amounts are all commissions? <coughs> well, we're not for sure yet. This is the judge's job to actually prove that there are commissions, but for instance, for the first one, uh, it's true that one, uh, 150 million for, uh, what's the, what's the counterpart again? Very good. Very Not the company, what they're supposed to do in exchange. You remember in the, wait. Of coordination and support. Yes, exactly. It's just a little suspicious, but again, we're not the investigating judges. Okay, um, maybe we can now open up more questions from the press. Uh, and if MPs uh, still have further clarifications, we can also do that. But I think the press have also been waiting and are willing to uh, already put up their hands and ask questions. Is that is that okay?